Hi everyone, it is April 17, 2019. What I have to share with you, to pass along to you, is really, really important. I will get to the database of, uh, well, over, over, I think, 2,300 studies on the effects of electromagnetic frequencies. But first, the Lancet which is one of the oldest and most prestigious medical journals out there. This article, I hope you download it because it may be scrubbed from the Lancet, but this is huge. For those who are still uh, stuck on, I only listen to the experts, I only listen to the real scientists, I only want authoritative studies. This is it. I'm going to read some of this article and then I'm going to get to the database which makes it very easy for you to look up studies regarding um, effects that are categorized. Yeah, this is huge. So I really do hope that you circulate this. Um, as the Planetary Health Alliance moves forward after a productive second annual meeting, a discussion of the rapid global proliferation of artificial electromagnetic fields, most notably the blanket of radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, largely microwave radiation generated for wireless communication and surveillance technologies as mounting scientific evidence suggests that prolonged exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic radiation has serious biological and health effects. However, Public exposure regulations continue to be based on the guidelines established in the 1990s on the belief that only acute thermal effects are hazardous. Hazardous. Prevention of tissue heating by radio frequency electromagnetic radiation is now proven to be ineffective in preventing biochemical or physiological interference. For example, Acute non-thermal exposure has been shown to alter human brain metabolism by the National Institute of Health Scientists. Yes, another authoritative source that have concluded non-thermal effects are hazardous. Chronic exposure or let me um, finish that, I'm sorry, uh, shown to alter human brain metabolism, electrical activity in the brain, and systemic immune responses. Chronic exposure has been associated with increased oxidative stress and DNA damage and cancer risk. U.S. National Toxicology Program and the Ramazzini, Ramazzini Institute of in Italy, very prestigious institute, confirmed these biological and health effects. Why are we not hearing this from our mainstream media reporters? Because they want this information silenced, hidden, don't let it come out. But so much has come out. Oh, and we're living in an incredibly dangerous environment. But the children, it's, hey, the children, do you want to make America great again? Work to try to create a healthy environment for children to grow up in. Due to the exponential increase in the use of wireless personal communication devices, the infrastructure facilitating them, this increase, 
You ready? The increase from extremely low natural levels has been 10 to the 18th power. Radio frequency electromagnetic radiation is also used for radar, security scanners, smart meters, and medical equipment. It is, I believe, but they say plausibly, the most rapidly increasing anthropogenic environmental exposure since the mid-20th century. And levels will surge considerably again as technologies like the Internet of Things and 5G add millions more radio frequency transmitters all around us. Anthropogenic, man-made, man-made frequencies disrupt the natural frequencies of the earth. So, we're living in a wholly different environment now, unprecedented. Evidence of its effects on the central nervous system, including altered neurodevelopment and increased risk of some neurodegenerative diseases is a major concern, considering the steady increase in their incidence. Yes, all of what I just read has exponentially increased. And it increases more rapidly in environments that are saturated with cell towers and antennas. Evidence exists for an association between neurodevelopmental or behavioral disorders in children and exposure to wireless devices and experimental evidence such as the Yale finding which showed that prenatal exposure could cause structural and functional changes in the brain associated with ADHD-like behavior. These findings deserve urgent attention. Now think about the child sitting there with their uh, wireless device and many of these children are sitting there for long periods of time even before they attend nursery school or kindergarten. Parents are giving these devices to little infants. Now these frequencies affect children more because their skull is still under development. It's soft. So it allows the frequencies to penetrate very easily into their brain. So then when they uh, age a few years, they begin to exhibit ADHD-like behaviors. Then they're diagnosed with ADHD and they're put on speed. Wow. I know a lot of children like that. I've spoken to their grandparents and parents. And their grandparents and parents did nothing. Did nothing. That is abuse. When you have the knowledge and you still let your grandchild or child sit there with these wireless devices and then they're diagnosed and put on speed, you are, you are abusing that child, really, and it's, it's severe abuse because you're ruining their brain and that child will grow to have an awful lot of problems later in life and guess what? The parent and the grandparent will point the finger at that child. Great, isn't it? Child set on a trajectory because of their neglectful and abusive parents or grandparents who do nothing. And then they get to be shamed and judged because their behavior ain't right. That happens to millions of children. So the Oceana Radio Frequency Scientific Advisory Association, an independent scientific organization, 
volunteering scientists have constructed the world's largest categorized online database of peer-reviewed studies on radio frequency electromagnetic radiation and other man-made elect um, electromagnetic fields of lower frequencies. Okay, 200 and I mean, 2,266 studies. And here it is. So, this is their home page. And what you do is you go to resources, click, 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 click the database. And, oh, I went to the newsroom first, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, check out their letters. And as I was checking some of this out, I came across this. Australia is now in the gold medal position for cancer. Australia, you have like the number one ranking for cancer. And Ireland, skin cancer, you're in third place. Wow. Okay. Um, you can check that out. Here it is, the database, and you click on this link. Database. Well, let me do it. Here we go. Loading. All right, and it brings you right here. So if you have the title of a study, if you have the author's name, um, if you have the URL, or the article URL, put it in right here, and then you can figure it out. Um, but they will have a search or a you know a, a button to click to get that article. My God, my brain is leaving me. All right, but what you can also do is so this is for the article and study categories, effects categories, study statistics. So I went to effects categories, brain tumors, cellular stress, uh, EEG changes, biochemical changes, breast cancer. So all of these effects have been studied. These are the effects of our very dangerous environment with this wireless and just now uh, 5G popped to mind well yeah it's uh, the killing fields this is what they're creating the killing fields fatigue altered gene expression uh, calcium influx neurobehavioral effect cognitive effects brain development Blood-brain barrier permeability, permanent permeability, um, auditory dysfunction, tinnitus, hearing loss. This is huge. Sleep effects, um, neurotransmitter effects, visual disturbances. Very funny because I just had to pull my head even further away from the screen because my vision just blurred up and I couldn't see. Thy thyroid effects, leukemia, depression, induced adaptive response, dizziness, vertigo, tumor of promotion, sperm, testicular effects, memory impairment, miscarriages, immune system effects. Okay, so you uh, Click on yes. Ow. Okay. Shoot. We're doing it together. Um, you may. You may have to join. You may have to join. I don't want to spend time going through this. You can come over here and go through it yourself. Um, and I sure do hope that just the ordinary human being like I am 
um, can have access to those studies. So I will link below to this, um, but let's get back to this article. Now, that this was published in the Lancet means something. <laughs> it's very important. And I'm going to put you on hold. Because my neighbor's dogs are very barky. Well, maybe they'll... All right, I'll keep going. Um, so, and the author writes, we have published our preliminary data on radio frequency electromagnetic radiation, which shows that 89%, which is 216 out of 242 studies, experimental studies, investigative oxidative stress endpoints showed significant effects. This weight of scientific evidence refutes the prominent claim that the deployment of wireless technologies poses no health risks at the currently permitted non-thermal radio frequency exposure levels. Shall I read that again? This weight of scientific evidence refutes the prominent claim that the deployment, deployment, a military term, of wireless technologies poses no threat to your health. What you are hearing from mainstream media, government officials, the President of the United States, when they don't bring up the health effects, they are lying to you and they are directly responsible for the health effects that you, if you don't have them now, trust me, the cumulative effect, you will have them soon enough. It is unbelievable what we are living. When you have thousands of studies from real scientists proving how many adverse health effects are associated with this wireless technology, and we can't get through to people, mm. but maybe something has happened. Their brains have been altered. Everyone I have spoken to, well, of subscribers, one subscriber, it took her six months to get rid of her Wi-Fi that she lived with in her home. Another two years, I have heard from subscribers that I have not met in real life, that they have gotten rid of their Wi-Fi. But when I talk to people around here, you know, in this apartment complex, they're sick, they're in chronic pain, their lives, uh, due to the rather numerous health problems that they have, they will not do a thing. They're all still sitting in that Wi-Fi. They have no survival instinct. They don't care. They don't care. There's a cause and an effect, and they won't do anything about the cause. So they live chronically um, ill. What does that say about that human being? When they know that all they have to do is get rid of that Wi-Fi and simply get an Ethernet cord to uh, wire their Wi-Fi. No, no, wait, said that wrong. Get their internet connection grounded with an Ethernet cord. That's all they have to do. They won't do it. They don't do it. They won't do it. And we're not talking mansions here. We're talking people living in boxes, little small boxes. No, no additional rooms except for the bathroom. It's not like they, they're carrying around a laptop all over the place. They won't do it. So something is wrong with our population when you find not just one, not just two, but it's kind of like a repeated 
experience. They won't do anything to feel better. Wow. All right. Um, so the weight of scientific evidence refutes the prominent claim that wireless technologies pose no health risk. Instead, the evidence supports the international EMF scientist appeal by 244 scientists from 41 countries who have published on the subject in peer-reviewed literature and collectively petitioned the World Health Organization and the United Nations for immediate measures to reduce public exposure to these artificial electromagnetic fields and radiation nothing has happened. The agenda is must go on. Evidence also exists of the effects of radio frequency electromagnetic radiation on flora and fauna. It's killing plant life and it is uh, disturbing the navigation of birds, bees, insects are dying all over the place, trees are dying, plants Okay, the potential effects of these anthropogenic electromagnetic fields on natural electromagnetic fields, such as the Schumann resonance that controls weather and climate, have not been properly studied, but we know the effect. Um, we do not adequately understand the effects of anthropogenic radio frequency electromagnetic radiation on other natural and man-made atmospheric components or the ionosphere, but we know it's very damaging. It has been widely claimed that the radio frequency electromagnetic radiation being non-ionizing radiation does not possess enough photon energy to cause DNA damage. This has now been proven wrong experimentally. Radio frequency electromagnetic radiation causes DNA damage apparently through oxidative stress similar to near UV radiation which has long thought to be harmless. There is an urgent need to address this electro smog. A genuine evidence-based approach to the risk assessment and regulation of anthropogenic electromagnetic fields will help the health of all of us my god I can't tell you how often I think back walking through the woods I loved being outside in nature that was if I could experience peace that's where it was it's all gone and um, just to get back to the time when life was simple. Jesus. All right. Well, we can't get back there when people refuse to open their mind, to look at the evidence. When people put their own convenience above their own health, when parents are putting this wireless technology in front of children when they know it's harmful, we are then dealing with a population of very sick, mentally ill individuals. That's why this continues. That's why all of us who are affected and not too happy about having to struggle every single day, yes, we get very frustrated and we get angry at all of the people who sit and do nothing. Some government health authorities have recently taken steps to reduce public exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic radiation by regulating use of wireless devices by children and recommending preferential use of wired communication, the Ethernet cord. Um, but this ought to be a coordinated international effort. We ought to be hearing from our president. We ought to be hearing from our government officials. We ought to be hearing from mainstream media reporters 
we ought to be hearing the truth. And we don't. Here are all of what I mentioned, all of the effects, and you could see that they had the end note number. Here's seven. Okay, the end notes. Studies. Okay. 19. Here, sleep, EEG alterations, effects of different pulsed modulated radio frequency electromagnetic field, smart meters pulse, cell phones pulse, cell tower frequencies pulse, Ra radar pulses, the, the extremely low frequencies pulse, Every, and pulsating frequencies far more dangerous than if we had a steady stream microwave radiation from cellular phones increases allergies. Okay, so yes, very important information. Microwaves and Alzheimer's diseases. And the hyperlinks to the PubMed right here. Okay, Google, Google Scholar. Um, I don't like living how I'm forced to live. Talking to a subscriber today, a friend in Dallas, who is really struggling. I know so many subscribers who can barely function and are dealing with serious medical um, issues, Parkinson's, a whole lot, a whole lot. I Yes, I can't just remain silent. I, this, this is maddening. Please circulate this information. Print it out, download it, print it out. You know, it's not a very long article. This is our exposure, okay, to radio frequency waves. 1950s is yellow, 1980s is this weird orange, pale orange. Look, from 2010 on, 5G is just going to put us way over the top. These are man-made artificial frequencies, not the natural frequencies that we resonate with. Yeah, those frequencies, the, the Schumann resonance. We actually resonate with the earth. We're in tune with the earth. This has thrown us completely off balance. And yeah, well, for us who have worked very hard to bring ourselves into balance, you know, to heal the disintegration, it pisses me off. <laughs> anyway, all links are below. I sure hope that you are all feeling okay. Ciao.